good. All the time. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Mother's Day, a glorious time that we celebrate all the moms in our lives who uh, have made us the people that we are today. So thank you, moms, for all you do, and uh, thank God for your lives. And, and we come here to, to celebrate uh, all the moms in our lives. An awful lot's going on in the life of our church this day. Uh, please note everything in the, in the Bolton, also in the, in the kiosk in the back. Uh, if you're interested in Young at Heart, you need to get with Liz Simmons after worship. They're, they're doing something really fun, but you've got to let her know because that's this Wednesday. Chuck Collins. weekend for those of you that were um, here you guys knew about the rummage sale that was happening from Thursday through yesterday uh, 3,000 thousand dollars was raised by the efforts of many so that's yes that's worthy of applause um, that's an established rummage sale throughout the community here. Um, a picture was sent to me of the uh, enormity of this event, and there were people lined out the door waiting to get in Friday. Um, it's something that um, is a huge support continually year after year. Um, we want to give thanks. Um, Jennifer Bachman wanted to make sure that everybody that helped behind the scenes working six, eight longer hours to make sure that this happened. Setting up tables, tearing them down, doing everything that needed to get done was there. Also, another um, fundraiser, if you will, is in the back of the narthex, you'll see baby bottles. Please take one, sign it out, fill it up with change, and it goes towards, um, help me out, Tom. Cornerstone. Cornerstone, uh, I, lost, I lost who it was going towards. Cornerstone Ministries. This is a huge thing that we did last year. Everybody that took a baby bottle and brought it back, filled with change. It doesn't have to be change exactly. It can have bills in it. You can put a check in there, I suppose. But we yeah. want to have change. We want to have, yeah. we want it, to helps, have bill. it helps moms who are who have children who are who are pregnant. It's a it's just a wonderful uh, ministry here in Lorain County to just to help help those who are who are moms in our community. That's right. And it's a great it's a great way. It's a great way to give back. And and yes, I, I too want to wish every every mother here today a Blessed day for yourselves. Happy Mother's Day to everybody that is here today. Happy Mother's Day. Tom Crusher's game. Isn't there a Crusher's game coming up too? Didn't? Isn't that something Liz Simmons is doing? Crusher's game? For At some point. Young and hard. Yeah, she doesn't tell me everything. No? No. Crusher's game. Nice. Yeah. That's it for me. Yep. Let's worship. Are you ready? I'm ready. Still on me. All right. Still on you. How's everybody doing? We enjoying this weather? Yes. 91 degrees in Minneapolis the other day. How about that? Is everybody ready for, for 90? No. Everybody ready for 90? How about we just skip spring and go to summer? You ready for 100? No. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if I'm ready for 100. Flowers need to get planted. We need to have that process. God gave us four seasons for a reason. Amen? Amen. He also gives us seasons of life that we go through for a reason. And those seasons that we go through sometimes come at an unexpected time. And then he also gives us the loving, kind nature of his presence to nudge us, to tap us on the shoulder and say, remember this, remember what you were going through? I was right there with you. And that's not to say anything other than he is God and he is an ever-present help in times of trouble. Amen? Amen. It's wonderful to know that we can drink from the well of his living water. That as in the scriptures, if you read in the Old Testament times, when the, when the warriors were getting set for battle, they put the worshipers in the rivers to prepare the battlegrounds. They put the worshipers first. And I've said this story before, that they were like the Marines back in the day. They were the Marines of biblical times. They were setting the stage. They were on the front lines preparing spiritually the hearts and minds of the soldiers, going up against armies that were thousands upon ten thousands greater than the Israelites. 
and the men that were chosen to fight the battle of the Lord. But we know that the battle in the end is the Lord's, and he gives us endless supplies of his grace, his mercies, his talents, and he uses what we have for his glory. Stand with us as we sing the river of God. Feel free to put your hands together. Feel free to just celebrate the newness of life and this day. Imagine your feet in a stream of cold water right now, just allowing the current to flow through you. And imagine that to be the ever-present Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the blessings that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Down the mountain the river flows And it brings refreshing wherever it goes And through the valleys and over the hills The river is rushing and the river is here The river of God sets our feet of dancing River of God fills our hearts with cheer the river of God fills our mouths with laughter And we rejoice for the river is here The river of God is teeming with life And all who touch him can be revived And those who linger on this river shore Will come back thirsting for more of the Lord Sets our feet a dancing. River of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter, and we rejoice for the river is here. Up to the mountain we love to go to find the presence of the Lord. Along the banks of the river we run We dance with laughter, giving praise to the sun The river of God sets our feet a dancing The river of God fills our hearts with cheer The river of God fills our mouths with laughter And we rejoice for the river is here Sing with us, will you? River of God sets our feet a dancing. River of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. Oh, yes, and we rejoice for the river is here. Oh, yes, and we rejoice for the river is here. A moment and say hi happy mother's day glad you're here good morning happy mother's day everyone it's my poem reading time oh, my foot is killing me richard did uh, you get this copy from uh joanna he switched it okay, okay. i was going to say it was interesting how becky I diverged i know i told uh, michael mm -hmm. I want to read something to you, and it is called When God Made Mothers. It's projected up behind me so you guys can follow along. By the time the Lord made mothers, he was into the sixth day, and he was working overtime. An angel appeared and said, why are you spending so much time on this one? And the Lord answered and said, 
Have you read the spec sheet on her? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. Have 200 movable parts, all replaceable, run on black coffee and leftovers, have a lap that can hold three children at one time, and that disappears when she stands up, have a kiss that can cure anything from a scraped knee to a broken heart, and have six pairs of hands. The angel was astounded at the requirements for this one. Six pairs of hands? No way. The Lord replied, oh, it's not the hands that are the problem. It's the three pairs of eyes that the mother must have. And that's, not, and that's on the standard model, the angel asked. The Lord nodded in agreement. Yep, one pair of eyes are to see the, through the closed doors as she asks her children what they are doing, even though she already knows. I've been there on that one. Another pair in the back of her head are where she needs to know, even though no one thinks she can. And the third pair of eyes are here in the front of her head. Therefore, looking at an errant child and saying that she understands and loves him or her without even saying a single word. The angel tried to stop the Lord. This is too much work for one day. Wait until tomorrow to finish. But I can't, the Lord protested. I am so close to finishing this creation that it is so close to my own heart. She already heals herself when she is sick and can feed my family of six on a pound of hamburger and can get a nine-year-old to stand in the shower. The angel moved closer and touched the woman. But you have made her so soft, Lord. She is soft, the Lord agreed. But I have also made her tough. You have no idea what she can endure or what she can accomplish. Will she be able to think? Asked the angel. The Lord replied, not only will she be able to think, she will be able to reason and negotiate. The angel then noticed something and reached out and touched the woman's cheek. Oops, it looks like you have a leak with this model told you that you were trying to put too much with this one. That's not a leak, the Lord objected. That's a tear. Well, what's the tear for? The angel asked. The Lord said the tear is her way of expressing her joy, her sorrow, her disappointment, her pain, her loneliness, her grief, and her pride. The Lord said the tear is her way of expressing her joy, her disappointment, her loneliness, her pain, her grief, and her pride. It was worth repeating twice. The angel was impressed. You are a genius, Lord. You thought of everything for this one. You even created the tear. The Lord looked at the angel and smiled. He said, I'm afraid you're wrong again, my friend. I created the woman, but she created the tear. It's the, it's the eyes thing that I can't figure out. I don't know about you, Chuck, but you know my mom always knew. How how did that happen? I I don't I don't know. But anyhow, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Happy Mother's Day to those who are a mom to somebody, a child of God. What an incredible gift that you give so many. So we come here to celebrate Mother's Day. Most importantly, we come here to celebrate Jesus Christ that gave you the grace, uh, gave you the hope gave the endurance. We're, we're just giving praise to God for all of those who have been there for us and continue to be there for us. And what a, what a joy that is. So uh, we come here with joy and so many joys. I mean, uh, just coming over here over the weekend and seeing the Reverend Sale folk, uh, that was pretty impressive. That line that Chuck talked about was around the parking lot. And so that was uh, pretty scary. Um, we, we didn't stay there very long. No, that's not for the faint of heart. But uh, a lot of good stuff happening, and we celebrate those things. We celebrate our families today. We celebrate uh, this incredible world that God has given to us and, the, and all the gifts to be able to, to be in ministry in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a gift that is. So we come here with joy, and we celebrate those joys. And in the midst of those joys, though, we always have some concerns and and please note those on the prayer list. I have a few I'd like to add. Um, a very, very dear friend of, of Bill and Joyce Reinhardt passed away this past week. In fact, Harvey was uh, Bill's best man at their wedding. So uh, prayers for the family and friends of Harvey Blank. Also, if you would please pray for Eva and Ron. Are there other concerns or joys of the church here this morning? Let us then go to God in silent prayer.
Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day as we celebrate the moms of our lives, those have, who have had a motherly influence upon us, Lord God. We give you thanks for their, their witness of faith, their witness of dedication, for just being there for us uh, through times of good, bad, and in between. Thank you, Lord, for, for creating moms. Thank you, Lord, for their heart of gold. Thank you, Lord, for this day as we come here to gather and worship and praise your name, who, who you have offered to us, um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we, we thank you for the grace and, and, and the power that that gives to, to us, Lord God. We, we come here with joy. We come to celebrate all these gifts. At the same time, Lord, our, our hearts weigh heavy uh, with prayers that weigh uh, deep upon us this day. We, we pray for all those who are caring for loved ones seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Lord God, we care for those who who are concerned about their, their loved ones, Lord, for all types of uh, unknown Ill illnesses and, and tests that will be, be given, Lord God. We pray for them. Lord God, we pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, especially this morning we pray for the family and friends of Harvey Blank and also the Cherney family in their loss. Lord God, we, we pray for everybody anywhere who are, who are caring for their loved ones. We pray for those who can't be here, those who are traveling, travel blessings upon them. Uh, we pray for those who are celebrating graduations, Lord. We, we, uh, we just say congratulations and pray you can continue watch care upon uh, the graduates here in our midst. Lord God, we, we pray for uh, those who are hospitalized, homebound, those who are, who are recovering from surgeries, procedures, and illnesses, and those who are anticipating uh, surgeries in the upcoming week. We pray, pray your watch care upon them. Lord God, this morning we lift up to you Tony and Jerry and Zachary, for Jean and Diane, for Eva and Ron, for Sandy, for Florentino, for Calvin, for Lorna, for Kathy, Wade Mertz and family, for Jim and Judy and Cynthia, for Margie, for Cindy Schindler and her family, for Terry and Susan, and for all the others, Lord God, we have lifted up to you either by voice or deep within our souls. Lord God, we pray your healing presence upon each and every one, that they may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit in body and in soul, that they may know you even more completely. Now, Lord God, we, we thank you for the privilege of serving you with our time, our talents, and the gifts we, we now bring before you. Bless and sanctify them all. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may uh, be empowered by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you've begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us offer our tithes and offerings. secret code that David played and it pleased the Lord but you don't really care for music do you when it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall and the major live the baffled king composing hallelujah
a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? Goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Scripture is John 17, uh, 20 through 26, and it can be found on your pew Bibles on page 1071. Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the word of the Lord. That's such a, well, all of God's word is such a, <laughs> is profound. But what I glean from that is the word of God, you know, and he says, may the word of God dwell within you richly. And Christ said that amongst so many things that he said to us and he says to us on a daily basis. But he says, if my words remain in you, I will abide in you. My love will abide in you. And we can use Mother's Day being that day, whether our mothers are here today or have gone to be with the Lord. We can abide in the love that our mothers have for us and had for us still within our hearts by thinking about them, by constantly having them upon our hearts. I know that Pastor Tom is doing a study on Rick Warren, and he talks about that in The Purpose Driven Life, that when he first was married to his wife, of how he constantly thought of her. He constantly had her on his mind. He was abiding in the love of his wife. And that's what we are, you know, that was emulated off of the abiding of the love that God wants us to have for him and that he has for us. He is constantly thinking of us. Whether we could ever fathom that is another story. But abide in the love of God today. Abide in the love of your mother today. Amen. Open my eyes, let 
let me see beauty that's made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here I am to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all full of sake became born. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I'll never this chorus would you please here I am to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to have our children come up please we have a special gift to present to our mothers now as they are quietly coming up standing around behind me um, we talked about in our junior church along with miss jennifer that sometimes you know how many of us have jobs like real jobs yeah we don't so sometimes it's hard to get money to buy you things. And what's one gift that we can share with you that, oh wait, God gave us? Our voice. So we're going to share with you the gift of song um, in a song called A Prayer for Mothers.
Thank you so much, and thank you, children, for sharing your God-given gift with us and your mothers. Now, if there's any other children that did not come on up here, it's time for children's chat. Everyone, just have a seat right where you're at. That's okay. You did a great job. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. Great job. Now, we have, today's a really special day. Mother's day. Yeah, we know. But are you doing something special or have you done something special? I had a fantastic thing. I've never, ever had it my whole entire life. Breakfast in bed. Breakfast in bed. Thank you. <laughs> it was a hoop. <laughs> but that was a fantastic thing, and I really appreciate that, and hopefully we can do it again next year. Because <laughs> I like that. But I want you all to turn around real quickly and look at the board up there, or the wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is Susanna Wesley, and she is the mother of Methodism. And you're like, what? Ma what do you think? What's a Methodist? Yeah, a group of people that have a, a beliefs, certain beliefs. And it was star started by John Wesley and Charles Wesley, and this is their mom. She lived a long, long time ago, over 350 years ago. Over 350 years ago, she was alive. That's crazy. And yeah, it was a long time ago. Methodist hasn't been around for a long time. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is Susanna. This was their mom. She was one of 25 kids in her family. Could you imagine having 25 brothers and sisters? That's like all of you doubled, all in the same house. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot to feed. Yeah. Yes. Everybody worked to put food on the table. But guess what? She married a man who was a preacher, and then they had 19 kids. That's a little bit better than 25, right? But there's people today that have that many kids, right? That's no big deal, right? Everyone pitches in and helps. When we see um, people all over the world, and they have great big families, but it doesn't matter how big your family is, right? And you might have somebody in your family that is not your biological mom, but is a mom to you. Do you have any teachers or aunts or uncles? And even, even men, yes, that could be a mother type figure that help you out. Susanna helped Charles and John Wesley learn about God and Jesus. She was very influential in their life. And she brought to them the knowledge of God along with her husband, who was a preacher in the Church of England. So all of their family was in, lived in England. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a special lady in the history of our church. And there are special ladies in your life too, right? What's, what, are, what are their names? What's your mom's name? Maggie. Maggie. Laura. Susan. Heather. Um, Laura. Heather. Kelly. Mommy. Michelle. Jennifer. Susan. Maggie. Yes. yes, all these great moms, right? And there's other people that we know that are moms to us as well, right? And we need to say a great big prayer right now for them, okay? Let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for Susanna Wesley and her family and for Charles and John and everyone else in the Wesley family that learned about God and shared it with all of us. May we be able to be a little bit like them, be able to share the word of God with other people that we know. And may we continue to praise and bless others today. Amen.
Susanna Wesley was an, an amazing lady, really. If you ever want to know what it's like to bring up 19 children, you ought to read her journal. Her journal is an amazing thing. Uh, Susanna would be, in today's standards, quite politically incorrect. Um, I think all that, uh, from the beginning of time, people tried to write a, um, some type of, of rule book on how to bring up kids from Dr. Spock to today and all that stuff. And she did some amazing things, but here's something that's really profound. She would read scripture to all her kids every night. And each one of them, she would sit down with them individually before they went to bed and just talk to them. To knew, just to see what their day was like and if they were sad or happy. I mean, she just sit down with 19 kids individually. And so there is scripture, there is prayer, and there is love. An amazing lady. So if you ever get a chance to Google um, Susanna Wesley, uh, read her journal. It, it, it's pretty amazing. Um, it, it wouldn't work too well in, in some of our society today, but she, uh, she was an amazing lady. Uh, let's pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit that as this scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. A little backdrop on the scripture reading here this morning. The people during Micah's day were farmers that he served. There was famines, uh, there was no water, there was, there was sickness, there was all sorts of things going on. The people did all they could uh, to help to survive, and they looked at God and said, what do you want from me? So with that in mind, here's the scripture reading. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. This morning we celebrate Mother's Day, an incredible day, a day set aside to celebrate those motherly influences on our lives, people that have helped us be the people that we are today. They have carried and still carry us through good times, through bad times, through everything in between. They protect us, they listen, they challenge, they discipline, and most importantly, love without condition. I've heard it said and bantered around that mothers, motherhood is a job. It's not a job. It was interesting, I said that, the same response. You ever get the eye? Last service, I got about 80 sets of eyes. You just 40 sets of eyes. But hear me out on this. Motherhood is not a job. Because what can happen in the job? You can quit, right? You can retire. Kind of like that commercial that, that, the, that the mom uh, looks into the, to the room of the, of the baby and says, uh, do you mind if I take the day off today? I'm not feeling good. If it was a job, you could do that, right? If it was a job, uh, you, could, you could be fired. Guess what? It's not a job. It is a calling. A calling is something that is part of you. It's so instilled in you that what you're doing is your lifestyle. It doesn't have a job description. It doesn't require a, a resume. But it requires all of you. Motherhood is a calling. And one does not need to give birth.
to be a mom. Her motherhood is far more encompassing than childbirth. To be a mom is to be a person who has a heart of gold and has a passion for another child of God. That's what a mom is. I have a mom who still cares for me, as far as I know. I have, and I have also many other moms. I've been blessed as a pastor to be um, a leader of churches, and every church, including this one, there's a group of motherly influences in my life and that help me through. And so we not only have our biological moms, we have all those moms that surround us all the time to give us hope, to care for us. And I thank you for that, that witness. Being a mom is the toughest calling in the world. I did a quick survey, and I do a survey questions now for the devotionals that come out, and I, I asked the folk, I said, what's the greatest joy in being a mom? I have a couple of responses here. Hearing your child say, I love you, mom, even when they're mad at you. To be able to guide and watch my kids be a better person to society, God, and themselves than I ever was. To see their child living for God. This one's good. Being a, mo uh, a mom is hard but rewarding. I've asked myself many times, I must be crazy for doing this. Being blessed by God to care for an irreplaceable gift, a love like no other. Knowing that with God's grace, her family will continue into the next generations. Seeing my children successful, happy, and loving God. The love of your child. Seeing your child turn out to be a good citizen teaching my son about God and sharing the love of Christ with them, watching him accept Jesus, making a difference in the lives of your children, the opportunity of becoming a grandmother, one of God's greatest gifts. And here's one that's really a hoot and great. My kids help me to remember how to have fun. And that is my greatest joy. Just a couple of who, uh, who sent me, and I, and I hear those things, and it says... What a wonderful testimony of the joy of being a mom. But as you read between the lines, and you always have to read between the lines, you hear all those joys, but something else was between the lines. Knowing how you and I were growing up was it always a joy. Was it always a joy for my mom to be my mom? She might say, yeah, but I don't think it was true. Sometimes our joy hits with the reality of being. And that reality is it's hard because we as human beings, we're given this gift of free will. We have our own personalities, our own likes and our own dislikes, our own time clocks, all these things. So imagine having that free will and having a baby and growing up in the child with the same free will, the same different personalities, all this other stuff, and being able to deal with all those things. No wonder there's no rule book because there can't be because every child is different. Every child has unique gifts. Every child has unique wants and needs. And I wonder if privately moms put up their hands and say, Lord, help me. <laughs> I'm overburdened here, Lord. Help me. Because sometimes life can get in the way of the joy that we can now share. And there's got to be times when you just end up in frustration, isn't there? Just times when you go up and say, come on, God. For motherhood has so many requirements, so many things that need to be done. Lord, I'm praying. I can just hear. Where are you? Things aren't going well, God. Where are you? 
I have to get over this hump. For a mom encompasses so many things. Moms deal with sick children, hospitals, doctors, courts, police, teachers, principals, babysitters. All to say, Lord, what do you require of me? Don't tell me any more rules. Don't tell me any more hoops to jump through. Don't tell me everything is going to be okay. Here it is, the bottom line. Here's what the Lord requires of you, moms. Is to do justice. To love kindness and walk humbly with your God. Justice, by the way, in God speak, is not Judge Judy. It is what you do. It's not what you wish for. It's not what you think about or complain about. Justice is just doing. Living the faith, it's action. It's simple action, no complexities. If a child is hungry, what do you do? You feed them. If the child is sick, what do you do? You help them. If a child is, is, hung, is, is, is hungering for attention, if, if a child is, is scared and lonely, what do you do? You hold them in your arms. You just do it. You don't need an instruction manual for that. That's doing justice. Seeking justice is putting love in motion. And that sounds like a mom to me. I remember growing up, my mom had that purse. You all have it. The younger the mom, the bigger the purse. And it didn't really matter what happened. If you fell and scraped a knee, I heard, Tommy, let me take care of that. Pulled out a band-aid. You remember that methale, that red junk that burnt? I don't think they made that for 40 years, and thank God they quit making it. Well, I guess it made everything feel better. She never asked me before she helped me, why didn't you listen to me and, and go in that direction? Why didn't you listen to me and slow down? She never said that until after she took care of the problem. That's what a mom does. Just takes care of things. Simply takes care of it. Kind of how Jesus responded to needs. When somebody was hungry, Jesus never said, do you have a reservation? Do you like this or like that? Jesus just fed them. No rules, no owner's manual, no nothing. Simply did what was needed. seek justice, but the love kindness is to live out our faith, not in fear, not in obligation, not some legal requirement, but simply out of love, because you could do no other. That's why, moms, it's a calling. You just do it, because that's what you do. You care for someone just because you could do no other. To love kindness is a passionate desire to forgive, to feel another's burden, not because you're required, but because you want to. You know, a mom will look you in the eye and no matter what you have done, no matter what grade you receive from your teacher, no matter how bad or heinous of what you said, a mom will look you in the eye and know that you are the greatest person in the face of the earth. That's a mom. That's a gift. That's loving kindness. Because I know full well that I'm not. 
But when a mom looks in your eyes and says, you're the best, that's loving kindness. That is mom. And that is a gift from God. I don't know how you do it. But that's the motivation. Is seeking love. I always look at the Bible as a love story. Because look at all the people in the Bible that God loved. They were bums, man. They were bums. I hate to say that. But David, my gosh. He was a peeping David. You had, you had all these people who were really bums and anybody else would say they're trash. God looked in their eyes and I love you. I don't care what you did. I believe in you. Look at Paul. God said, I love you. No matter what the world thinks of you, I love you. And always will. That's a mom. God made a promise. And a promise is an amazing promise to be with us even to the end of the age. That means that good, bad, and everything in between that enlivens the souls of our moms to say, I'm with you. I believe in you when the rest of the world doesn't. That's what a mom does. That's the bottom line. And finally, to walk humbly with God. And to walk humbly with God is, is an amazing thing. And I think about uh, two words. To walk humbly with God is to be in awe of the mystery of why. Be in awe of the presence of God. Be in awe of the promise that God has fulfilled in Jesus Christ. But be in awe of the gift that has been given to care for another child of God. You know that God entrusted you with children? And that's true. That's a mystery. And that's awe inspiring. That, saints, is walking humbly with God, knowing full well you couldn't do all this stuff on your own. Because it doesn't make any sense that we could. To look back. That's why I say you've got to read between the lines of those affirmations that were sent this past week. To look back with joy. Forgetting all the stuff. And say, wow, Lord, what a ride. You have blessed me, Lord. For either a long period of time or a short period of time with the blessing of a child. Wow. Truly a thank you, Jesus moment when you walk humbly with God and when you look at your kids or the children in your charge and say, wow, what a gift. So walking humbly with God is just that wow time, man. That's, that's just the affirmation. Our moms walk humbly with God because they could do no other. And that promise again, to the end of the age, God offers us courage, strength, hope, and has promised wisdom and undying love for all of those who are caring for children entrusted to their care. Thank you for your witness, Mom. 
offering the gift of love that can only have come from God. Thank God for all of our moms, all of those who are with us now and those who worship in the great church triumphant, who have offered their unending love for us, even and especially when we didn't deserve it. That sounds like grace upon grace, and that is truly a gift. Amen. All right, Chuck. Moms. They're good and bad, huh? I got nothing. (laughs) I got nothing. My mom's awesome. I swear she had a boomerang for a shoe. She knew what I was doing. She'd just toss it. Hit me proceed with her conversation. So anyways, what about her day? She was good. I what used is, to think that little paddle with the, with the rubber band and the ball on the end was a toy. Oh. <laughs> Guess you're not allowed to say that. <coughs> I'm 40 something. And mother will still say to this day, you think you can fool me, but you can't. And I think that's, a, as you would say, Tom, that's a mom thing. Moms always know. Mom's got that super sense. Let's stand, shall we? What a gorgeous day. I hope you guys get to enjoy it. We all got plans for this afternoon. Going out to eat, going to do stuff. I got to go serve 500 people. Moms. Serving mothers. Amen. God is everlasting. He is from Alpha to Omega, beginning to end. He is, I gotta put my cape on before I forget, sorry Seth. (laughs) He is everything. He gives us strength when we need it, amen? Amen. Amen, and gives us three answers to prayer, or three responses, shall we say, to our requests, and that is yes, no, and wait. And the waiting is the hardest part a lot of times because we don't wanna wait. We're an impatient lot. We want things now. We have things now. We have the internet. We have phones. We have technology that gives us the world at our fingertips. But as this song starts out, it says strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. So let's try and do that this week, shall we? Put your hands together. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you made forever our hope, our strong deliverer. You are God, the everlasting God, you will not faint, you won't grow weary, you are a defender of the weak, you comfort those in need, you lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the the everlasting God, the everlasting God, you will not fail. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait up
says we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for giving us the strength to rise as we need to wait on you for your absolute best for our lives. Give us strength. Give us hope. Give us peace in the midst of that waiting, Heavenly Father. Give us courage to face this day, this gorgeous day that you have made, and we are to rejoice and be glad in it, to celebrate the mothers that are still with us, the mothers that have gone to be with you, that are in our hearts, that are with us in our everyday by your grace, we thank you for everything that you have done. We ask that you be with us as we travel. Be with us this week, this day, this moment, and always. In Jesus' name, all of God's children said, amen. amen. Have a great week, everybody.